I struggled for years wondering what was wrong with me. How could I better myself? How could I fix myself? What soft skills did I need? You know, how do you get the seat at the table? Um, I questioned my own, you know, am I not professional? Talisa Lavery of Seattle admits that she almost gave up on herself. I didn't even want to live anymore. I felt like I had no place. I felt like I couldn't get it right, no matter how hard I tried. Her struggle, life in corporate America. Lavery worked as an event planner for more than a decade, a dream job that turned into drama. Although I was able to get through the door, I suffered a lot. <laughs> um, and I didn't know at the time they were called microaggressions or biases, right? Microaggressions are described as the indirect, subtle, or unintentional discrimination against members of a marginalized group. Talisa gave us one of the more egregious examples. I was working closely with another white woman, and she began to talk about how she would bring her husband to this particular event. And just out of curiosity, I said, oh, are we able to bring a guest to the event? And she said, sure, as long as he doesn't have braided hair and gold teeth. Because attracting the right candidates is all about the right job listings. Ruchika Tulshan, an inclusion strategist and author of The Diversity Advantage, says stories like Talisa's are quite common. And she says until the protests this summer, most companies were reluctant to even talk about race. When I was asked to speak at organizations, especially large, well-known organizations, the call to action to me was, please don't really talk about race. You know, like you can mention it, but please talk about like gender equality, talk about women in the workplace. And in her work, Ruchika points to another frustration that gets in the way of progress. This idea of meritocracy, you know, this idea that if you work hard enough, you're gonna get ahead. And therefore, if people are not represented in the workplace, you know, people of color are not represented in the workplace, it's because they didn't try hard enough. They didn't get the degrees that they needed to get. They didn't lean in hard enough. And what we find, and you know, data backs this up, is that's absolutely untrue. And discrimination seems to start with the resume, according to research in the Administrative Science Quarterly. Out of 1,600 people studied, 25% of black candidates received callbacks if their resumes removed racial clues like a first name or affiliation, while only 10% got calls when they left ethnic details intact. Among Asians, 21% got calls that they used so-called whitened resumes, whereas only 11.5% heard back if they sent resumes with racial references. And there appears to be economic consequences to this. Research shows the black and white wealth gap is as wide as it was in 1968, regardless of the education level. Black families whose main wage earners graduated from college have about 33% less wealth than white families whose heads dropped out of high school. After the recent Black Lives Matter protests, numerous corporations publicly expressed their support and promised change. There's a way that things keep happening, that the same damn thing happens generation after generation. And it's because somebody decided to go along with it instead of trying to stop it. That's Glenn Kelman, the CEO of Redfin, talking about the company's efforts to reduce bias when it comes to hiring and promotions. It doesn't mean that someone has some nefarious racist past. It just means that we all come into work with groups of people we're comfortable with and groups of people who we haven't talked to as much. And it may be that we end up giving the answers to the test to somebody we play tennis with and then they tend to do better at work. Redfin started focusing on racial diversity in 2018, specifically in management roles, and their own data shows the progress has been slow. But after the recent protests, the company doubled down, implementing bonuses for senior executives if they hit specific diversity targets and increasing what's called pay transparency. That's when salaries are no longer a big secret. Experts say it's one way to reduce the pay gap. You have to be able to tell a black employee, a female employee, a white employee, here's the average, you're below the average because you're underperforming, or you're above the average because you're overperforming. And here's the data that I'm basing that on, this project or that project or this sale or that sale. Um, but just saying, 
The pay is fair. These are not the droids you're looking for. We need to move on. You will never move on. And there is no more sincere form of recognition than just paying people what's right. Other companies are also ramping up diversity efforts. And late summer, Amazon announced a number of new hires and key positions and appointed the first black executive to Jeff Bezos' S team. It's a group of leaders who set the company's priorities. Nordstrom says by the end of 2025, it'll increase representation of black and Latino people in leadership roles by 50%. Starbucks set similar goals and launched a mentorship program to connect employees of color to senior leaders. But make no mistake, these are also business decisions. Research from the consulting firm McKinsey found in the three years studied, companies with racial and ethnic diversity on the executive team financially outperformed those without by more than 30%. And Kelman says his company has seen firsthand the value of diverse teams. It wasn't just some high-minded liberalism, that it was a business pragmatism. There are all sorts of problems where we just kept looking at it one way until we brought a diverse team onto that problem and had all sorts of perspectives and a better capacity to listen and to be humble and to think that we might be too full of ourselves. But hiring for diversity is very different than retaining them. Talisa is proof of that, running her own consulting business now and releasing a book called Confessions from Your Token Black Colleague. She says it's validation for some and a call to action for executives. The request is for you, yes, to make an extra effort to eliminate those biases and to increase the number of marginalized people within your company and not to check it off the box. Yes, it's an investment of time. There's an investment of money in, in getting people together, but it's worth it.